What's up guys? So today in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to take out duplicates out of your data in Airtable. And so this won't be using Excel, won't be using Sheets, won't be using any of that. Although there are some alternatives there if you want to look into them. But this is going to be showing you how to do it two ways, just natively in Airtable. And the more duplicates you have, the more time this might take. But this, these are the two most elegant solutions in my experience on getting duplicates out of your data. So if you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS, and what we do is we help business owners probably just like you help you optimize your information systems. That's stuff like Airtable for asset management or a CRM, Asana for project management, and Slack for communication, and then Zapier to really connect all the systems together and optimize and automate the workflows. So if you're interested in anything like that, you can check out the link in the description and request a consultation from me or someone on my team. But without further ado, we'll get right into the video now. So once you get your Airtable database open, it might look something like this. And I think the easiest way to show you this is to show you a database of contacts because you don't want to be having a lot of duplicate contacts, especially if you're linking it to different opportunities or interactions or accounts in your sales CRM or in really in your project management in any database that you have, you don't wanna be having duplicates, especially in something like a primary field that should be unique. So the way I would start out by doing this is you wanna identify a field, like one specific field that is going to hold the information that is duplicated. So if it was contacts, maybe I would choose an email or I would choose a phone number because keep in mind if it's name, then you could have two John Smiths or you could have two Scott Brewers. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend using name. However, if you know that you don't, if you just know for a fact you don't have any duplicates uh, for names, then you, you don't have any like two people have the same name, then you can use that in this case. But for us, we're just gonna base this on email. So just remember to think what's a field where it would be the same data uh, for one person, that would be represented twice, but it's still a unique value. The reason why email and phone number is because I can have my phone number and I can have my email, but nobody else in the world can have my email or my phone number. So those are usually just two really good fields to have as a unique identifier. That way nobody else is copying our names. So if we come over here to the names and emails, I'm gonna exit out of these views over here. And the, there's going to be two ways. So the first way that I'm going to show you is how to find them. And it's once you find them, it's easy. I, I, I like this view to be able to delete them so that you can see which one has more full information. So to do the first method, the first method is you're going to be grouping those records by that field. So if I come up here to the group, I would come up here and click like the, it looks like a little checklist kind of. You'd click on that and then you'd pick a field to group by. So click on this. And then for us, we would either choose name or we would not choose name for me. I would choose email or phone number. So I'll choose email here. And now we can see that there's certain people with the same email in here that should not be. So like Lori should not be in here twice. Olivia should probably not be in here three times, three times. But as you go through here, in your real data set because this is a fake data set. This is just some stock data that's in here. You can come in here and see, okay, this person, obviously this wouldn't happen, that it just happens to be oliviaexample.com, but these two people, these are actually the same person and one of them, I'm guessing, has more information than the other. So I would delete the one without this, this field empty. So you can see all the other field is identical, but if we come in here and delete that one, then we're perfect there. Now another one where some of these up here where like there were three people with the same email and that's just like a separate email of mine. So I would leave those the same, but if these were actually like the different people, then you would come in here and you would delete like the ones that are duplicates. So I would come over here and like delete whichever ones don't serve your needs. So that's half of it. And the other part that you can try, so I'm gonna take off this grouping so we can see all of this. And then I'm just going to come in here and add some duplicates. So if I duplicate that record, duplicate that record, and we'll duplicate another one, and we'll duplicate that one as well. We can come over here and if you come to your apps, 
So this one has to be on a paid pro plan. This, you can't use the apps in a plus or a free plan, but if you come up here to the apps, you can add a new dashboard. So you can add a dashboard. This one will just be in the test one. And we can install an app and we'll call it the, or we'll find the dedupe lock or the dedupe app. So we can insert this and this identifies duplicate records and delete or merge them. So if we install this now, what we can do is we can come into whichever table, so we're already in the context table, so that works well. And then we can pick the view. So we don't have to we don't have to pick a view, this can just be any of them. And then now you want, like I said earlier, you want to pick fields for duplicates. So here you're actually toggling them on, but I'll move myself over here so that we can come in here and pick these a little bit easier. So for us, we might be choosing email. We also might be choosing phone and maybe we'll also choose name. If we can find the name, we'll include that. And you might, like when I click on these, you might see that there's like different things you can have here. So like exact, similar, or fuzzy. And so these, these are important to note. You probably want to know the differences between these. So exact, that's like an eye for an eye. That's like um, ben at optimizeis.com and the other one is ben at optimizeis.com. Those would be the exact same value. So that's what you would pick here if you want to be that specific. And then there's also these two other options. So similar is has the same value, but maybe capitalized, accented, punctuated, or ordered differently. So if you want to have a little bit looser of a match between the two records, then or between the two records based on that one field specifically, then you could choose similar, or you could come over here and choose fuzzy, which fuzzy has a similar value, but it may contain typos or misspellings. So this one is like punctuation, capitalization, and this one is typos or misspelling. Fuzzy is like stuff that's close. So if it, instead of ben at optimizeis.com, it was bne at optimizeis.com, I would expect it to find that in the fuzzy. So we will go with exact on this one. So the email should be exact. If somebody misspelled their email, then we're not gonna let them be in our database anyways. So we won't even let them do fuzzy. And same with phone. So we'll toggle phone on and we need that to be exact as well. There shouldn't be really any uh, anything wrong with a phone number. But now if we come down here to name, what we can do with name is because these are probably more, more likely to be misspelled. Uh, they have fuzzy, so like maybe there's a middle name sometimes, middle name not all the time, all of that. So we'll choose fuzzy on this one because we we expect there to be some like, I, well, you can either choose similar or fuzzy. There might be some capitalization stuff. Maybe someone forgets to capitalize their first or last name and all of that. So now once you choose your table, your view, which we choose, we chose none in this one, and then you set up the fields that you want to check for duplicates in, you can come over here and you will be able to see the different records that are duplicates. So if I come over here and click review five sets of duplicates, and then I bring myself up here. What we can see is there's, it pulls up the duplicates like sort of one match at a time. So I can come in here and resolve these duplicate records. So what this means is you're basically seeing these in a sorted view. So this right here is most comments, but for us, maybe we might wanna choose most fields filled. So what this will allow us to do is, like I said earlier, we deleted the record that had the least amount of fields filled, so only the last one, one, it was filled on one and was not on the other. You can do that same thing here, except you can just make the computer work for you instead of going through and trying to find those. So what you can do is once you pick these, if you just want to merge these, what you would do now is you would click on this and use it as the primary record, and then you would merge and delete the other record. So you merge this one and you delete this. So if there's anything that's not the same between these two, it would bring them over. So you can see like the, the new one over here on the right, but I'm not sure that there's any, I don't think there's anything different between these. So it's gonna be the same either way um, for this one. So we'll merge and delete that one and it will delete the extra record. So we'll merge that one and we were just gonna go through, so we just duplicated most of these, but if you had different information uh, in all of these, then 
it would really merge the information that's missing on one into the record that has the information on the other. So I hope that makes sense. But basically, we're just coming here and keep saying use as primary record, merge, use as primary record, merge, and so on and so forth. And then you can come back in here and do different ones in other tables. So maybe in the interactions table, in the contacts table, in the opportunities table, you can keep doing all of these in those tables. But now we've limited it just down to a few in here. So there's only two sets of loop duplicates so that we made some improvement. Now, some of you might have like a hundred in there. So either way, it's just gonna take some time to go through those. But once you get it sorted and then you set up the proper automations to find records instead of just duplicate ones, then you'll be, you'll be all set and your database will work really well for you. So if you enjoyed this video, then you'll probably like the video down in the end screen right now. So it's right in the middle of the screen right now. So if you go click on it, it'll take you to 12 CRM automations. So these are automations you can just take and implement into your Airtable CRM and they'll work for you. They'll help you close more leads, get more qualified contacts and follow up faster and more predictably. So if you just want to go check out that video right there, it'll give you 12 super easy to use uh, automations to use in your business. So I hope this cleaning up your data step video, this data cleansing video was very helpful for you, but highly encourage you to check that video out and learn those 12 CRM automations. So without further ado, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you there.